Hello students. In this section, we are going to learn about the process of photosynthesis. We all know that photosynthesis is a process by which the green plants, like for example, we see a tree here. They depend on the sun, that is the sunlight energy for the process of photosynthesis, for the process of making food. So plants, they trap the light energy from the sun. The sun is the ultimate source of energy. That means the plants get the sunlight, they trap it and produce food with the help of this energy, the light energy they receive. Okay. What about the term photosynthesis? What does it mean? So the term photosynthesis, it is made of two terms here. First one is photo, which means light. Okay. And the other one is synthesis, which means to combine. Okay. So what is happening here? Some materials, they are combining in the presence of light. That is why the food is being prepared in the plants. Let's understand about it in detail. So what do the plants need for photosynthesis and what is produced as a product in this process? Let's see. So plants need carbon dioxide, which is a gas which they, which they take from the air. Okay. They also need water, which they take from the soil and they produce the glucose okay what they produce is the glucose that is the c6h12o6 that is the food for the plant okay and certain waste products are also prepared like here the two waste products which are prepared are the oxygen and some amount of water so this is the equation for photosynthesis which tells us what are the requirements and what are the products formed I hope everybody is able to understand. So what actually is photosynthesis? How will you define it? The photosynthesis is a process of synthesis of organic food. What is the organic food? The glucose. What is the formula for glucose? C6H12O6. Okay. From inorganic, what inorganic materials are needed? The carbon dioxide and the water. Using what? The solar energy captured by the chlorophyll pigments. So the plants appear green to us and the plants can use up light energy. Both the things are related. They are, they are able to trap the light energy because they have this special chemical in them which is called as the chlorophyll. Now the sunlight here, the solar energy is converted to the chemical energy through the process of photosynthesis. When I keep on saying the chemical energy, the chemical, it is actually the fixation of the solar energy in the form of glucose. So what is prepared here? How is the energy from the sun is fixed? It is fixed in the form of glucose. I hope everybody is able to understand. Let's recall what we have just now discussed. Oxygen produced by photosynthesis is vital for life. We say that the photosynthesis process is a very, very important. All the organisms, they are somehow dependent on the plants. This is an important thing that the oxygen is vital for life. That means if the oxygen will not be produced in photosynthesis, all the other living creatures, they won't survive. Okay. Light energy is converted to chemical energy by this process. We know that the light energy from the sun, it is getting fixed. All living beings ultimately depend on the plants for food. We know that we have learned about it when we discussed the food web that somehow directly and indirectly the plants are the ones which are the producers on which all the animals they depend. Okay. The amount of carbon dioxide is balanced in the atmosphere due to the photosynthesis. Whatever activities we do, most of them like uh, I should give you an example of fossil fuel burning it produces carbon dioxide. So that is uh, posing a harm to the planet, to the environment. Planting more and more trees is always beneficial because of the reason that the carbon dioxide, which is extra in the atmosphere, it can also be taken up by the plants for the process of photosynthesis in turn. So what they do, they take up the carbon dioxide and form the oxygen. So they are recycling uh, the materials present in the environment. I hope everybody is able to understand. Here we must understand certain important points. Okay, so first thing is light is necessary for photosynthesis. 
we know that there are various activities which we can perform uh, to know whether uh, the photosynthesis uh, takes place in the presence of light or not. Okay. So for that, there is an important test called as the starch test in which iodine solution is used. So what actually is the starch test? The iodine gives bluish black color with the starch. We say that the glucose is prepared as a product in the process of photosynthesis and this glucose further is stored in the plant in the form of starch. So if we find that there is starch deposition in the plant body, we know that definitely photosynthesis has taken place because the starch can only be prepared if glucose was there. So glucose is converted to starch. Okay. So if the iodine gives bluish black color with the starch. We say that the photosynthesis has taken place. So we can pluck a leaf and just put iodine solution on it and just find out whether the photosynthesis has taken place or not. Okay. The part of leaf exposed to light will always give positive results with the iodine test. When we say positive results, it means that it is giving bluish black color. Okay, so the parts of leaf which are always exposed to the sunlight, they will always, always give the bluish black color. They will always give the positive test. Whereas the leaf which was uh, covered, the portion of leaf which was covered, it won't give the positive test. I hope this one is clear to you. Okay, now think about it, whether photosynthesis can take place in artificial light or not. Think about it. Obviously, it can. We know we have plants which are called as indoor plants. Are the indoor plants getting the sunlight directly? No, definitely not. In the laboratories, we have uh, seen, we have seen the pictures, we have studied that there is a technique called as a plant tissue culture in which the plants, they are grown inside the labs using these artificial lights. Obviously, the plants can photosynthesize in artificial light as well. Okay, now the photosynthetic pigments, the chlorophyll here, okay, they absorb only white light from the electromagnetic spectrum. The rays from the sun which are coming to the earth, the visible light or the white light from that, the plants are able to capture. Okay, we have seen this view somewhere in our life. That is the rainbow. Okay, this rainbow is made of various colors. Okay, the various colors called as the Vibgyor. To find out whether the white light consists of all these colors or not, we can use this experiment of dispersion of white light in which we use a glass prism and we pass this white light through it. And when, you, when we pass this white light, we find that it appears like this. The various colors appear like this and forms a Vibgyor. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, all the colors. So that means that white light consists of all these colors, those are the Vibgyor. But when we look at the plant, we see that plants appear green to us. What does it mean? The white light from the sun consists of all these colors. All the colors are absorbed by the green leaves of the plant. Only one color is reflected back that is the green color. So the reason why we uh, see the plants green is that they reflect the green color out of the Vibgyor. Okay, so the plants reflect mainly the green color of the white light falling on them due to the presence of chlorophyll. So plants look green to us, that's what I told you. So what is falling on them is the white light. What the white light consists of all the colors, that is the Vibgyor. But what color the plants appear to us is green because they are reflecting mainly the green color. Right? Let's try a few questions to understand whether uh, we can solve them or not. Which of the following is not true concerning photosynthesis in green plants? Now, not true. Now, what happens? We just start reading the options quickly. We don't go for the question properly. We don't read it properly. So here the question is asking not true. Let's read the options. Absorb carbon dioxide. Obviously in the photosynthesis they definitely absorb the carbon dioxide. So this won't be the answer. Releases oxygen. It releases oxygen too. 
occurs in the presence of sunlight, definitely it occurs in the presence of sunlight, absorbs the carbohydrates. Now I must tell you the carbohydrates, the glucose and the starch, they are forms of carbohydrates. So in the photosynthesis, do the plants produce carbohydrates? Yes. Do the plants absorb the carbohydrates? No. So what will the answer be here? They absorb carbohydrate is not true concerning the photosynthesis process. I hope it was clear. Why is it important to boil the leaf in alcohol while carrying out the starch test on the leaf? We all know already about the starch test. We have also revised about it. So it is said that you should boil the uh, leaf in alcohol or put it in warm alcohol before testing for uh, starch. Why is it so? We know that iodine test is a color based test. So if it is a color based test, we want the color to be very very clear. The color which is appearing to be very very clear. Okay, so why we boil it in alcohol? Let's read the options. To dissolve the waxy cuticle. Waxy cuticle, it is a layer, a waxy layer present on the leaves. Okay, that is called as cuticle. This is not the answer. To make the cell more permeable to iodine solution? No, this is also not the answer. To remove the chlorophyll. Like I said that it's a color based test and the leaf is already green in color. So uh, obviously we want to, we want the color to be very proper. That's why we want to remove the chlorophyll. This can be the answer. To stop the chemical reactions in the cell. No, we don't do it for that. Uh, we uh, do it, uh, uh, we perform another activity, another step for that, for stopping the cells uh, to perform any activity. That is uh, boiling the leaf in water. Okay, this kills the cell. So here we know to decolorize the leaf we do it. So we do it to remove the chlorophyll. Let's try the next question. The equation given below represents photosynthesis. Identify P and Q. So here we see that P plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives glucose plus Q. So let's read the options and find out what P and Q are. Okay, P is carbon dioxide, Q is oxygen. P is oxygen, Q is also oxygen, P is carbon dioxide, Q is also carbon dioxide, P is oxygen, Q is carbon dioxide. So we all know that along with the water, the carbon dioxide is also needed, right? So carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll give us the glucose and oxygen. So here what will the answer be? The answer will be option A, right? I hope everybody is able to understand. Let's try the next question. In the process of photosynthesis, the source of oxygen is very, very interesting and very important question. From where does the oxygen come? Okay, so from the carbon dioxide, from the water, from the glucose, none of these. We must learn and remember that in the process of photosynthesis, the water breaks down in the presence of light. Okay, the water is breaking down in the presence of light to release the oxygen. So from, from where does the oxygen coming? It is coming from the water. Okay, I hope this section was very much clear to you and you were able to solve the questions as well. Thank you.